So um, these are documents that I found in the Tate Archive at Tate Britain um, that relate to Vito Conchi, um, the American performance artist who was kind of working in the 70s. I was invited to kind of develop a research question that would relate my practice to an aspect of the Tate's collection. And I was really interested in exploring really the status of performance and live art within the Tate. And how things are now kind of, you can buy performance and, and collect performance art and it's preserved in different forms. But often there's a kind of disparity between, you know, experiencing something live and then the documentation of it. I spent uh, a couple of days at the archive at Tate Britain and I came across some material related to Vito Conchi which came through a kind of correspondence that he had with a, a curator called Barbara Risa. He sent kind of sort of these descriptions that are kind of like instructions or documents of performances. I think I'm really interested in this, how, how you can activate these documents within my own work. I'm interested in that idea. Often I, I kind of reenact things or re-perform things as a way of kind of like getting an understanding or trying to learn about stuff through experiencing it, I think. And in terms of kind of sort of how I was able to kind of work with all you guys, I think that was really maybe about sharing that process um, so that we'd have like a collective conversation about um, how we might kind of like explore these ideas. And it was really, it was sharing our ideas, wasn't it? It wasn't kind of like teachers and students were well in helping out how to fail. I mean, it was from the beginning, I think, it's kind of like when we do our crits, it's everyone has just got an opinion and that's how that idea developed, wasn't it? It was really kind of a group thing. That idea of kind of conversation and sharing ideas probably was planted quite early on. The, the kind of overarching title for this whole thing was, a, was Live Art Salon. You know, for, also for talking about archives, I think, you know, you have a conversation with a work. And I think there's something about in a way, we've made this piece where that's become the material, the conversation. Because performance art is, is ephemeral, um, it can be documented, but perhaps to experience it is the way to actually engage with it. So us experiencing performance art by performing it was, was the entrance point. The first performance, that was quite late on, we still didn't really know what we were going to do, did we? And then we realised it was the 9th of March. That turned out to be Nikki's birthday. So we started talking about the idea of having a birthday party at the Tate. We had a, a time period where we would talk about an object that we just opened and then the time period would be over and somebody would leave the table. A lot of it was talking about with the dinner party idea was thinking about what, what someone would be surprised to find in a gallery. So what could we stage, what could we sort of insert into the space that would, would catch people catch people out. Because the audience was a part of it, wasn't it? That was one of the things we were really keen on doing. Because their response was equally as part of the performance as our kind of conversation, in a sense. So the second performance, which we was discussing, took part in the um, tanks, which was kind of um, the setting for a reverse birthday party. But in this, I got presents for all my guests. And these presents were direct responses to the gifts that I received. Because Nicky gave me um, part of his collection in response to me giving him part of my collection. So I've made him a note. I was given a note from Nicky's collection in return for a postcard I had given him from my collection. I wanted to give Nicky another note as a gift to perhaps further his note making. You know, again, we kind of often think of the archive as being kind of sort of set or documentation as being fixed. 
but actually it's not, it, it's, it's mutable. So this kind of like batting back and forth is really lovely in terms of really thinking about, you know, um, really how the document fac facilitates a conversation or an ongoing process. Perhaps in the first um, performance, there was some kind of shared control over the conversations in which you all had some kind of control over where the conversation might go by presenting this gift. In the second performance, I felt like I had quite a bit of control because I was going to be dictating essentially every conversation in some way. I mean, maybe this is a point at which we should talk about the difference between those two because I think um, the second performance took, pl took place in the, the large tank and that was a completely different experience, wasn't it, in terms of how it was set up. I think especially with the lights of cues and how that changed, moving into the second space down in the tanks, everything felt much, much bigger and a little bit scarier and there were proper lights. Yeah, there's a kind of sort of formalisation and we had much less time for the conversations. The second time it was much, much tighter. But there was also an archive as well of the previous performance, I think that was formally, so there was a kind of projection showing images from the first performance. So which is something that continues, I think, with each iteration. But do you think that goes back to some of the things you brought up right at the beginning then, about that correspondence which feels then like it's almost a set of instructions, and at the beginning it was, yeah, it's playful, and you said, yeah, I think you said right at the beginning of this conversation something about being drawn to performance, those, that particular period of performance art because of the way that they were quite, their work was quite playful. Yeah. And that is how this started, but yeah, this becomes, although we haven't necessarily written down a set of instructions, it has become yeah, it's become more formal. They're not instructions like that, I've just written out, but we kind of had like, we'd get the gifts and then the gifts would spark the conversation and then when the alarm clock would ring or the lights would come down and we'd move on and we'd stand up and I think there kind of was basic instructions but only outlining kind of the way it would go. The last thing we've, we've got here is a, a call sheet um, for, it says call sheet for Live Art Salon Film 12th of July 2013, so it's, it's the instructions for um, for today. So is it possible to recreate a performance or is it a new performance every time? For me the performances haven't felt, well they felt like repeat performances mm. but not of the same performance if that makes sense. It's been a similar experience but um, I don't know whether you can ever truly recreate a performance. Not without a script especially, for the way we kind of do it. This is about a group of people at a particular time with particular motivations coming together for a particular period of time and then you, you couldn't reenact Nikki's birthday party in the tape because that wouldn't work again. We, we've had many discussions as we've gone through this process as, as to how, how does this end? Do, does it end? Can there be an end to what we're doing and to these discussions? And I guess does performance art end? I don't, I don't know, but this feels kind of like a really nice conclusion to what, what we've been doing. And it, it feels like something that could potentially be archived. And as you were saying earlier, that kind of idea of a cyclical performance. Um, and it feels like the work's done that as well as we've been going through it. And I think it's only fitting that we kind of archive the outcomes that we, we have produced. There's a question to be posed about uh, at what point do the objects collated as part of the performance become relics.